Hello, friends, and welcome into the Cowboys Report presented by BetDSI, the Internet's number one sportsbook. I am your host, Tom Downey, and we'll start things off with a little smallish news item on the Cowboys. DeMarcus Ware, not that it's much of a surprise, he's going to go into the ring of honor. He revealed that Jerry Jones has already told him that he's in, and Jerry also already told DeMarcus Ware when he'll go in. Now, DeMarcus did not spoil the beans on that one, that did not tell us when he's going to go in, but that one is going to happen. So keep an eye out for that one, folks. DeMarcus Ware, plus, of course, Witten and Tony, those guys are all going to go in in the very near future. All right, on now to our Cowboys rumors. First up, do the Cowboys not need Sean Lee anymore? I'll give this one two stars. There is a little bit of truth to it, and it could very well be true come the end of the current season. And I don't think it's that they need Sean Lee, but you'd rather still have Sean Lee out there playing. But the big thing overall is Leighton Van Der Esch and Jalen Smith have made the Cowboys not miss Sean Lee as much. In years past, when Sean Lee didn't play, you can pencil in the Cowboys defense for giving up 30 points and probably losing. This time, they shut down Jacksonville on, on, on offense. And overall, the, the LVE and Smith duo have done very well so far. So you don't technically need Sean Lee in the way that you absolutely ha had to in the past, but I still think you want him out there. So I'm typing in kind of no, you don't need him, but I still want him on the roster, even though he often is injury prone. All right, folks, go subscribe to our Cowboys Report YouTube channel. We're trying to get to 5K subscribers. We are almost there, just a couple of ways. So tell a friend. I wouldn't be surprised if by the end of the day we had already passed that 5K mark. YouTube.com slash Dallas Cowboys Report has all of our great Cowboys coverage all in one spot. All right, next up, speaking of Sean Lee, is he still the Cowboys' number one linebacker? Well, I'm going to give this one three stars. I know that there's plenty of reason to love Jalen Smith and love Leighton Van Rich, and this is not a knock on either of those two players. It's a compliment to Sean Lee, who, as I will continue to say until it's no longer the case, when he's healthy and out there, he is a top three off-ball linebacker, i.e. non-edge rushers. And Lee is working his way back into practice, and he's the guy that gets the most first-team reps out there in terms of with LVE and with Smith. So it's going to be a rotation when those guys, or when Lee comes back, they'll all split time. But when it comes to, like, third down, and late in the fourth quarter, and you need your two best backers on the field, Sean Lee is going to be one of those guys out there. So let me know who you guys think is the best linebacker on the roster. I still think it's Sean Lee, but there is some reason to believe in Jalen Smith and Leighton Van Der Esch long term. All right, folks, I have a special Cowboys jersey giveaway for you guys. Here's how you can get in. For starters, sign up and deposit with BetDSI. Chatsports.com slash bet. Promo code is Cowboys120. Put down 50 bucks. They'll give you 60 for free, so you're already making money on that end. Then DM me on Twitter, at WhatGoingDowney, and I'll hook you guys up with my NFL Pick'em game link. If you guys deposit with BetDSI and you join my NFL uh, weekly pick'em, just straight up, just pick the winner each week, we'll give you guys a Cowboys. You see the Zeke one on there? We've got Dak and some others as well. So get signed up with BetDSI. DM me on Twitter at WhatGoingDowney if you guys want in. It's a fantastic deal, folks. All right, back now to the Cowboys rumors. The communication lead to the road woes for the Cowboys in recent weeks. If you ask Zeke Elliott, yes, so I'll give it three stars on this one. It does seem pretty likely. And Zeke says, the communication has been bad on the road. And my immediate thought when I heard Zeke say that, the Cowboys missed Tra Travis Frederick. Now, Joe Looney's been really good. He's been way better than what I thought he was going to be. That is a big deal for the Cowboys. But I think you're missed Frederick. And Zeke pointed out the whole, like, pointing out guys, pointing out the, the Mike linebacker. I think that's where they miss Frederick most. Looney's been good, but he's not the NFL's best center in Travis Frederick. So three stars, but again, it's more than just one thing that's been the problem for the Cowboys offense this season. All right, some more bad news here. Tavon Austin, could he head to IR? I'll give this one two stars. Not quite set in stone, but Jason Garrett says, and we don't have any further information on it as of right now, that Tavon is getting a second opinion on his groin injury and that an IR stint could be possible. And that sucks for the Cowboys because even though they haven't used Tavon in the 12 to 24 touches, some people, as <laughs> Stephen Jones said, the Cowboys were going to use him in, they do miss him. And with him out there, I don't know how you replace Tavon. And we'll talk more about this in my mailbag section later on in the week. But you don't really have a Tavon Austin type player. A Bryce Butler, a, De a Deontay Thompson can fill the role in terms of speed and going deep. 
and I guess Cole Beasley can handle some of the jet sweeps and motions, but you miss his speed and you miss the short area ability that makes him so dynamic at times. The ability to make guys miss in, in, in a tight area of field. That's where you're going to miss Tavon Austin. Most. Plus, not to mention, you're going to miss him on returns as well. All right, folks, if you guys like the shirt that I'm wearing, go get one of your own at Mizzen and Main. Comfortable.af is the site, and trust me, folks, there will, you will not own a more comfortable dress shirt than a Mizzen and Main shirt. All right, more receiver news here. Back to one Terrence Williams. Could there be a suspension coming for the Cowboys wide receivers? We'll bump this, or the receivers, excuse me. We'll bump this one up to three stars. Mike Fisher says that he thinks it's now moving from looming, which was what had been reported here on this show as well in the past, to we think this is actually going to go down. And if that's the case, he will service his suspension while on IR. And while he's banged up, by the way, I look, it doesn't really matter too much for the Cowboys right now because the suspension, whatever, he's already hurt on, and, and on IR. I don't know if we're ever going to see T. Will again for the Dallas Cowboys. Let me know what you guys think. Type 1 for yes. Type 2 if you, know if you think he'll play another snap for, for Dallas. You can, cut, you can save a lot of money by cutting him next year. You clearly don't need him because he hasn't made any impact at all this year. I say, t I say 2. We're not going to see T. Will play again for the Dallas Cowboys. All right, one more rumor for you guys. Could a breakout be coming for one Michael Gallup? I'll give this one three stars. And I, again, as I've said before, I wasn't super pleased with how Gallup played early on in the year. And I think Gallup would agree he had some drops and some overall issues. But he almost had that incredible TD catch against the Jaguars. That was a thing of beauty. Not his fault he couldn't bring it down. That's a tough play that he almost found a way to make. And the progress, you can see it week in and week out. And you can see it also in the snap counts. It was Michael Gallup who was actually the Cowboys' lead uh, snap getter among receivers. Not sure why it's not Cole Wizzy, but whatever. Gallup was your number one guy. Now, with that said, despite all the snaps, wasn't really targeted against, against the Jags. Cole, of course, was great. We all know that. Michael Gallup only had two targets, though. Now, he pulled in the one, a great jump ball. The other one, he almost caught for a touchdown. So I wouldn't mind shifting those four targets and moving them over to, to Gallup instead. But overall for the year, he hasn't quite made the impact that you want, but I think that's coming. Now, he's not going to be Calvin Ridley with the Falcons right now. That's never going to happen with the way the Cowboys offense is run, with the, with the players that the Falcons have alongside of Ridley. That's not going to happen. But I do like what Gallup brings. I know I was negative on him earlier this year, but we've seen the progress come along. I think by the end of the year, he's going to be your top outside receiver. And frankly, given the way Alan Hearns has played so far this year, he might already be. All right, folks, before we go, I do want to remind you one more time about my Cowboys jersey giveaway. Sign up and deposit with BetDSI. You guys know how much these legit jerseys cost. These are from the NFL, by the way. You put down 50 bucks with BetDSI. You get a free jersey. BetDSI is going to give you 60 for free. And then DM me on Twitter for my NFL weekly game picks. And guess what? You can win 25 bucks each week if you come in first place on that. So DM me on Twitter if you guys want in. It is a fantastic value. Let's take it now to my Cowboys mailbag. I love what I think you guys do as well. First up from Aaron on Twitter asking, what's the changes the Cowboys go after Amari Cooper? Well, at their current asking price of a first-round pick, pretty much zero. The Raiders reportedly won a first-rounder for Cooper, which makes no sense because the Cowboys aren't going to give that up. They're not stupid. Cooper is not worth a first-round pick. And he has drop issues, and frankly, his value is at his lowest point. Now, if it comes down to a third rounder, which is what I want to give up, or a second rounder even, that's when I think maybe it makes a little bit more sense. But there's been enough buzz that pretty much every Cowboys reporter in America has talked about an Amari Cooper trade, so just keep that in mind. As for Cooper himself, let me know if you guys want him. Type Y for yes, type N for no in the comments section. All right, Matt S. asks, is there anybody who might be on the trade block? And I assume he means from the Cowboys perspective. I don't think there's anyone really on the block, but if there is a name that you guys know that could be shopped, I think it's actually Jordan Lewis. Now, as I've said before, I don't like the idea of doing this. I like him more than anything Brown, although Brown has been a nice surprise for me this year. I don't expect Dallas to sell right now either. But Lewis is proving his value with a Rougier banged up. This is why you don't trade away corners. You always need corners in the NFL. So I don't think you're going to see Lewis get dealt, but if the Cowboys collapse in, until the end of October, Maybe someone like Lewis makes a little bit of sense. He doesn't quite fit what Chris Richard wants to do ideally. All right, folks, I am hosting and giving away Cowboys jerseys. Here's how you can get one, a Zeke one, a Dak one, several others. Sign up with BetDSI, chatsports.com slash bet. 
Promo code is Cowboys120. So you're putting down 50 bucks with BetDSI. They'll give you 60 for free. You get a free Zeke Elliott jersey. And then DM me on Twitter, at WhatGoingDowny, to join my game, my weekly NFL Pick'em game. And if you come in first place, you get 25 bucks. You're saving way more than you're actually spending here if you do this deal. So DM me on Twitter, at WhatGoingDowny, if you guys want in. All right, from Echelon7, he asks, All the Cowboys podcast hosts said Thompson was a true burner. Hasn't seen that yet this year, which is fair, but is he? And why not put him in the in Austin's role? Well, as for the burner part, yes, he is. Deontay Thompson does have the speed to be a legitimate vertical view. That, and frankly, he has been that throughout his NFL career. The problem for, I think, that Thompson is it's the way he's been used. It's mostly been inside of 10 yards because the Cowboys offense never takes shots deep downfield for whatever reason. Thompson has one target this year of 20-plus yards. And in terms of the deep that Austin did at least try to bring for the Cowboys, although it wasn't all that consistent because the Cowboys don't take shots deep down here for whatever reason, Thompson can fill that deep speed role. But the part that made Austin so great was the screens and the jet sweeps and the reverses. I don't know if Thompson fills that role. He doesn't quite have that same short area quickness that Austin and what makes Austin so talented. So you can use him a little bit like Tavon, but I don't think it'll be in the exact same Tavon Austin role. From Terminator Cop 1, next up, speaking of Thompson, asks if Bryce Butler should get more playing time than Deontay Thompson. You guys know that I'm not exactly the biggest fan of Bryce Butler. At me on Twitter, haters, at WhatGoingDowny. But I agree. And for one big reason, I think that if you, and I know this, if you cut Deontay Thompson, you should get a fourth round pick via the compensatory draft process. Butler is just as fast as Thompson. He and Dak clearly have good chemistry, and yeah, there are drop issues with Butler, but as you guys have pointed out before, he can make some plays for you, and he's done that before. He's got one snap for Dallas. Why is he on the roster if he's not ever going to play? Doesn't make sense to me, so I'm actually typing in B in the comment section here. Give me Bryce Butler. I think he should play more right now for the Cowboys because the offense needs some more help there. Why not try the guy that you saw make some plays for you last season? All right, from Cherry now. He, and we just talk more about the receivers here. Once Gal to be the one, Butler the two, and then Beasley, Hearns, and Thompson. Here's kind of how this depth chart would look if Cherry gets their way. Gal the one, Butler the two. If you're talking about three as in the slot, that's fine. I think in reality, Beasley is your number one. But if you're baking as like outside one, outside two, and slot one, then I'm fine with Beasley there being your number, number three. I lean still more toward Alan Hearns. But if Alan Hearns doesn't get things going in the near future... Why not try Bryce Butler? Got to get something going there. Butler brings you speed, which I think you need right now on this offense. All right, King see the Goat, whose emoji does not transfer over in this tweet. He says he's really unsatisfied with the secondary besides Byron Jones. He says Heath got an INT, but it was a tip drill. Overall, with the secondary, I do get what you're saying. I think if you had asked most Cowboys fans, they thought it was going to be the breakout year for Xavier Woods in particular. Hasn't happened yet. I to warn you guys, by the way. But it hasn't happened yet. Byron, as King C points out, has been fantastic this year. Has become a true number one cornerback. Cheeto's been banged up and has been targeted a lot. And as a result, has given up some yards. But I'll make that of Anthony Brown. Not perfect by any means, i.e. the play against DeAndre Hopkins. But I've been pretty pleased with how Brown has played. I still would prefer Jordan Lewis. But Brown hasn't been a disaster for the most part. Hasn't been perfect. More of a C grade. But I think he's been pretty good. Overall, I give the Cowboys secondary, I don't know, B minus, C plus, somewhere in that range. Byron bumps it up, but you need more impact plays from those series in particular. Heath and Woods, beyond the one interception, haven't quite done it enough so far this year. All right, folks, we're trying to get our YouTube channel to 5K subscribers. Head on over to YouTube.com slash Dallas Cowboys Report. We'll get that lower foot up in there for you guys as well. So subscribe today. All of our great Cowboys coverage all in one spot. And oh, by the way, has exclusive content on that page. Subscribe today, folks. YouTube.com slash Dallas Cowboys Report. All right, now back to the mailbag. Ricky Tompkins. He says, once Dallas pays everybody, Dak and Zeke and D-Law, will they go out in the office and, and throw money around unlike previous years? They're going to have a lot of money. Now, you're actually not going to pay Zeke after this year because I assume we're talking about this current offseason. But even if you want to pay Dak and Demarcus Lawrence and whomever else, you will have enough money to go out and make some splash signings. Maybe it's an Earl Thomas. Maybe it's a big-name wide receiver. I would expect this offseason for the Cowboys to go out and get a splash free agent or two 
something we haven't really seen them do in the past couple years, as you point out, Ricky. All right, next up from Dominique, he says, does Sean Lee take LVE spot when he comes back, or will he continue to sit on the bench? It's going to be a little bit of both. It's going to be a rotation, and it's going to be a three-man rotation for the most part. You'll occasionally see some of Damian Wilson, maybe a little bit of Justin Marshall would like a snap or two a game, but it is going to be those three guys, Leighton Van Der Esch, Jalen Smith, and Sean Lee sharing duty, keeping them all fresh, keeping them all healthy. And by the way, that trio at linebacker with what we know Sean Lee is, with how good Smith has looked this year and how impressive LVE has been, I think we have to have this, this, this discussion at some point. Is this the best three-man linebacking core in the NFL? Well, you're not talking about edge guys. If they're all healthy, I kind of think so. All right, from Corey now. He asks, will Jason and Scott be on the hot seat if we lose the Redskins, or will Jerry continue to give the old attaboys? Well, both, really. Garrett is on the hot seat. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Garrett is coaching for his job right now. But even if the Cowboys lose, yes, he's still on the hot seat. But guess what? Jerry and Steven are not going to say, oh, yeah, we hate Jason Garrett. He's definitely on the hot seat. No owner, no front office man in the history of ever has ever publicly stated anything but support for their head coach before, right, all the way up until right before that they, they got fired. Now, maybe it leaks out, but they're not going to say, yeah, we're pretty disappointed with, with, with our coach so far this year. They're going to be supportive of him. That's how front offices work. With that said, if Garrett misses the playoffs, I do think he's gone. All right, folks, get your own awesome Mizzen and Main shirt. Comfortable.af is the site, and trust me, that URL checks out. You will not find a more comfortable dress shirt than a Mizzen and Main one. All right, back now to the mailbag from the Gold Surfer. He asks, what are the chances that Gary gets fired after this year? Well, as I said before, I think if Cowboys miss the playoffs, Garrett's gone. I don't know how you can justify bringing him back if that ends up being the case there. At that point, you have got to go find somebody else there if you're the Dallas Cowboys because – it's not getting the job done if Jason Garrett can't get you to the playoffs. I know it's kind of a rebuilding year, but I do think you need to fire Garrett if he fails to make the playoffs. So, folks, let me know. Do you still want Garrett fired? Type K for keep, type F for fire. It was better last week, but we know this Cowboys team up and down, up and down, just like this Redskins team actually as well. All right, next up, Cowboys mailbag. Mr. Porcupine says, make Tony Romo the head coach. He's truly a Cowboy. <sighs> Every week. I love Tony Romo. I really do. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. He's, I was a huge fan of, of his even just growing up. But you cannot plug in a broadcaster with zero head coach experience and expect to win games. If Tony wants to come be the quarterback's coach, sign me up in a heartbeat. But you can't make him your head coach. As great as he is, as much as I love him, it doesn't make a lick of sense. All right, folks, Cowboys jersey giveaway. Here's how you can get a Zeke Elliott jersey or Dak Prescott jersey or several other ones for free. Sign up and deposit with BetDSI, chatsports.com slash bet, promo code Cowboys120. Then DM me on Twitter for my NFL Weekly Pick'em link. Sign up is free for, for that game. If you come in first place, we'll give you $25. So, again, you're already way ahead here. Then join my game, and then we'll send you guys a free jersey. These, these by the way, are the official NFL Nike jerseys. These are a legit deal. You will not get this deal anywhere else. So DM me on Twitter, at WhatGoingDowny, if you want in. All right, last question here from Bayboy J says, do you think Leighton Vanish has a chance to win Defensive Rookie of the Year honors if he keeps up his play? A chance, yes. But there's a lot of good contenders out there. So I don't consider it the most likely outcome right now for this for, for Van Der Esch. As great as he's been, you're competing with guys like Derwin James, who's been great. Denzel Ward's been fantastic. Bradley Chubb just had like three sacks in a game. So overall, I like it quite a bit. And also Darius Slender actually has more tackles. So he's going to be in the mix. I don't consider him a favorite, but I think he deserves some recognition because he really has been fantastic so far this season. All right, folks, go follow me on Twitter at WhatGoingDowny, and we'll see you guys tomorrow for our next Cowboys Report.